rats come from uh, East Africa, so they live completely underground. Uh, they're highly adapted to living underground. Most of the um, burrow is composed of foraging tunnels, which can, if you add them up, can extend for three or four kilometres. So massive, massive sort of labyrinths. But because those tunnels are dug, um, searching for roots and tubers, um, their, f their food resources, um, they tend to be at the level of the roots, so within, a, say, half a metre or a metre of the, the surface. Um, the more sort of central core areas of the burrow, where you find communal nesting chambers and communal toilet chambers, uh, they um, can be deeper. And once in, in Kenya, we dug down to a nest chamber, it was about five feet underground, which is quite a lot of digging. <laughs> and clearly, um, that's difficult for predators to get at, even the, the snakes that can get into burrows. And I think also it's very thermostable um, down at that level as well, which is good for these sort of cold-blooded mammals. The um, original um, founder stock came from um, Kenya, um, were collected by someone who did a PhD uh, in the wild on their ecology and behaviour, and they brought some animals back to London. Their lifestyle was really the first thing that intrigued biologists going back to the late 70s, early 80s, when it was realised that the naked mole rat actually behaved like a social insect. And we have animals living together in very large groups, uh, on average, you know, 80 to 100 in the wild, sometimes up to 300 though. Yet within these enormous colonies, um, there's just a single breeding female, uh, the queen, uh, and she mates with one or two, maybe three reproductive males that she selects. And then the rest of the colony of both sexes are uh, reproductively suppressed, and they, they help, basically. And some of the bigger ones then may become non-workers and they adopt a defensive role. So in the non-breeders, if you take a male and a female out of the suppressing influence of the colony and pair them together away from the suppressing influences of the queen, they will quite rapidly become reproductively active. The work has broad uh, implications in understanding uh, you know, captive breeding and reproductive suppression in, in other species and even maybe in humans. The mechanisms are probably likely to be very similar. So the queen generally has an elongated body. Um, after having a few, the first few litters, the vertebrae get longer um, to help you know, accommodate these large litters. She's also the, uh, the one that normally tramples over the top of everyone else when they meet in the, uh, in the tunnels on face-to-face -face encounters. She's probably in the, the first um, sort of 20 or 30 days of pregnancy, I, I would say, maybe halfway through the 72 days. So the pregnancy is actually quite long for a rodent as well. Towards the end, when the queen is very, very um, large and pregnant, so they can have 27 offspring in one litter, she would have um, great difficulty in getting down, uh, especially the smaller tunnels in the wild, and would be dependent on the workforce bringing, bringing food back. You can see that although they're called naked mole rats, they're not in fact completely naked because they have um, sensory whiskers scattered uh, along the body, which is, uh, gives them an important tactile sense, um, given that they're living in total darkness. If we can get this one to turn around and you look head on there, you can see the, the teeth that protrude outside the mouth, those front incisors, which is what they use to dig um, the burrows. And the, the mouth seals behind them so they don't swallow soil as they're digging away. Um, and the external ear uh, is also absent. Their gut it contains quite a, a potent mixture of um, um, microorganisms which uh, uh, help them to ferment the high cellulose content of the food. It also gives rise to one of the more unpleasant aspects of mole rat behaviour, which is uh, coprophagy. So when the young are being weaned, they, have, they eat the faeces of the adults in order to infect their um, digestive tract with these all important microorganisms. Some of the animals we can see here, um, you know, will be over 20 years old and going strong. The last time I, I asked a colleague in the States, um, she had some uh, about 32 years so we probably don't even know the upper limit just yet. Another thing that was noted was that they appeared to not really um, get any of the usual age-related problems, including cancer. 
So recently there's been um, two separate naked mole rat genome projects and so far um, the uh, genome project has um, revealed that some of the uh, genes that we would expect, cancer genes uh, related to low oxygen, genes that are implicated in ageing have been shown to be uh, doing different things in naked mole rats that will have you know, wide ranging implications for human and animal health and uh, understanding um, biology in general. Mm -hmm.